before I leave. to look like in 10 or 20 years time it's a big question and it affects everything of course it affects the issue of how people plan content and it affects the issue that brings us all here the question of governance uh, we've got our distinguished panel I'll be introducing them uh, as they come up to speak and of course you'll get your chance to have your say uh, on what's going on my name is Jonathan Charles and I'm moderating the session today as we look at the future of the internet uh, let me call upon first uh, Malcolm Johnson, who's Director of the Telecommunication Standardization Bureau at the ITU, uh, to give us his view on how he thinks the internet is going to develop over the next 20 years. Malcolm. Thank you very much, uh, Jonathan, and good morning, everybody. I think we can have the lights up. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. Just going to say a few uh, introductory words. Um, so uh, perhaps you could put the lights up. Um, so good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this joint ITU-EBU workshop on what the web will uh, be in 20 years' time. Quite a challenging topic for, our, for us. Um, I'd like to welcome those also following online, and uh, I believe uh, the event will be, be archived, so people will be able to look at this uh, later uh, at a more convenient time, wherever they are in the world. ITUs are very pleased to uh, cooperate with the EBU on organizing this workshop on such a, an interesting uh, subject. And I'm pleased that uh, we have uh, uh, such a, uh, a wide representation of uh, speakers from different constituencies uh, on the panel. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, a workshop uh, on a topic of what the web will be in 20 years is obviously a challenge uh, if you look back 20 years, 1988, I uh, don't believe many of us uh, would have uh, been able to envisage the internet as it is today. Even 10 years ago, uh, the internet was still in its infancy, and uh, although we might have an idea which direction we were heading, uh, we're still struggling to understand how it's going to work for us. Uh, it was an exciting time. Uh, 10, 20 years ago, the dot-com era, but as we know, it was uh, the boom was followed uh, by a bust. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, despite that setback, uh, we move forward into the world of uh, convergence. And uh, although we are now facing uh, another global financial crisis, I'm sure the internet will continue its current uh, rapid progress. Over the, uh, the last 20 years, we've moved from dial-up modems of 56 kilobits to broadband connections now being used by over half of all internet users. Of course, a large percentage of these uh, connections are facilitated by ITU standards, the digital sub subscriber line uh, standard or, or cable modems. ITU's work has given uh, significant impotence to the development of the internet and uh, we're looking forward to uh, the implementation of next generation networks where ITU has done a lot of work on, on, uh, on that technology and uh, its uh, application uh, to uh, multimedia, for example, IPTV, etc. So um, although it's difficult to predict what the net will be looking like in 20 years time, there are some key concerns that uh, need to be addressed and uh, of course we've been discussing them this week in the IGF. The internet on climate change, accessibility to the internet for persons with disabilities, protection of children online, cybersecurity, multilingualism uh, are all uh, a strong focus and we, we have to address these. The, ITU, the ICT sector um, produces between 2 and 3% of uh, 
total uh, global greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, the Internet's a significant part of that. It's going to grow as we have Internet connections more widely used uh, on mobile phones over the next 20 years. So I'm very pleased that uh, we've uh, established a dynamic coalition on this issue of the Internet and climate change held its first meeting yesterday, and uh, I believe it's really living up to its name of being a, a dynamic coalition. So look forward to uh, work on that, that we have to take into, a co into consideration in the development of, uh, of the web over the next 20 years. ITU's uh, mission is, is to connect the world, and that includes the 10% of the global uh, population which uh, has uh, disabilities and the internet has a tremendous potential to increase the capabilities of persons with uh, disabilities. But accessibility requirements have to be built in to the, de to the standards we're using uh, at, the, at the design stage. You can't retrofit to allow for accessibility. It's too expensive and too difficult. Um, we've also established a dynamic coalition on <coughs> accessibility. Uh, to the internet for persons with disabilities and that's meeting for the first time tomorrow and uh, I think that's an issue that we need to uh, take into consideration in the development of the web. Young people have a especially important role to play in the information society both as potential beneficiaries and as uh, future drivers of ICT development. However, as the number of children and young people accessing the internet increases, so too does the likelihood that they will be exposed to harm. According to recent surveys, over 60% of children and teenagers using the internet uh, uh, are in chat rooms on a daily basis, and three in four children online are willing to share personal information about themselves and their family in exchange for goods and services and one in five children will be targeted by a predator or a paedophile each year. And sites promoting child pornography, violent games, illegal content are just a few examples of the risks they face. ITU has launched its uh, Child Online Protection Initiative, which will provide a platform for facilitating governments, industry, educators, law enforcement, and child experts to share views and develop best practices on, on this. We certainly hope this will be a feature of uh, IGF uh, uh, discussions and in the considerations for the development of the web. Cybercrime continues to be a major threat to the future of the Internet. The World uh, Summit on the Information Society called upon ITU to build confidence and security in the use of ICTs to take the lead on that action item, action item number five, C5. In accordance with uh, its mandate, we created the Global Cybersecurity Agenda. And within its framework, we are committed to connecting the world safely and responsibly. Ongoing ITU work on uh, standards includes security threats and risk management, countering spam, identity management, security for the NGN, IPTV, home networks, and mobiles, etc. But the criminals are always uh, one step ahead. The problem we're faced with is that the internet is being used today for all sorts of purposes it wasn't designed for. If we really want to know what the web will look like in 20 years, we need to tap into the excellent talent that exists in the world's universities and research establishments. Innovative ideas like the internet develop from there. That is why that uh, this year, ITU, we started a new initiative to attract uh, academia, which we call uh, the Kaleidoscope. We issued a call for papers on the subject of innovations in next generation networks, and over 140 papers were submitted for peer review, and the best 50 were presented uh, over two days in Geneva in May. We had uh, 220 participants from 50 universities, and we'll be repeating this uh, in each region each year. Uh, the authors uh, of the best three papers, in fact, uh, received a prize of $10,000, and their papers will be published in the IEEE proceedings. Uh, one um, presentation that was uh, made at the Kaleidoscope in May, we were hoping to have repeated here uh, today, 
It's unfortunate that uh, Professor Aoyama from Kayo University in Japan, uh, who was going to be here uh, to give this presentation, unfortunately was not able to be with us today. Um, it explains uh, several uh, research activities going on around the world towards uh, what's called the, the new generation networks, which is seen as a coming together of NGN and the internet. I'm not going to try and explain this uh, to you. It's a very uh, extensive and lengthy uh, presentation. Art Levin will uh, mention more about it uh, later. Um, but it is available on our website and I encourage you to look at it. So I've uh, highlighted some of the, uh, the concerns we feel must be addressed in the future development of the Internet. That's not to say, of course, that we don't recognize the tremendous benefits of the Internet. The spread of the Internet has brought enormous benefits to society, to businesses, and to government processes, and to improving education. Uh, although 20 years ago we might never have envisaged the Internet of today, uh, and we may not be able to envisage what it will be 20 years from now, we certainly cannot imagine life without it today. So I uh, wish you a very um, productive uh, exchange of views on, on this uh, far-sighted topic, and uh, hope you uh, have a rewarding uh, experience in the room. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Malcolm, thank you very much. Well, broadcasters are doing a huge amount of work, of course, to look ahead for the next 20 years, including my organization, the BBC. We think very hard about uh, the way the net is going to develop, uh, particularly in terms of content. Uh, if you believe content is king, then it's part of the dynam dynamic uh, development <coughs> of the internet, the dynamism of the internet, to have good content and content which is increasingly tailored towards the net. I'm delighted to welcome as our next speaker Toshio Kuramatu, who comes from NHK, Program Director of NHK Television in Japan, very, of course, uh, far-sighted always in terms of new developments and uh, an organization which has always taken the lead over many, many years uh, in trying to, to look forward. Toshio. Thank you. NHK, Japan Broadcasting Corporation. My title here is Editor-in-Chief of NHK Online, and I would like to address some trends that might uh, define the future of the Internet. From the p point of view of media as a traditional content creator, from the content point of view, what is the future of the Internet? Obviously, it will be video. We just launched our, our version of uh, iPlayer, uh, which called NHK On Demand on December 1st. But other than that, uh, I think there's uh, some uh, areas or trends that uh, might change the future. First, decline of the influence of old media. This is the ranking of last month's axis in Japan. On the top, it's Yahoo Japan. It's huge. Then it is followed by uh, Google and Rakuten, an uh, EC mega site. You have to dig down to the 50s and 60s to see the old media companies. NHK is one of the top old media company, which is uh, ranked 50, 54th. As a solo public broadcaster in Japan, I am very concerned about this trend. One day, it might be very difficult to reach these internet users to inform news and crucial information via the internet. Second, the rise of the social media. What are the internet users are doing on the internet these days? They are communicating with their friends on Facebook, sharing photos on Flickr, and exchanging their tweets on Twitter, even creating their own video and uploading it to YouTube. They are not passive users anymore. They are creating their own content and consuming it as well. They watch a video on the web, as we do, but they might 
they treat it as a social currency, which means they communicate it with their friends using their favorite video to express themselves. Traditional media companies are far behind this trend, and we have to come up with a new way to harvest this trend and encourage and play a certain role in this social media area at the same time. Third, <coughs> digital natives are coming. I was one of the produ uh, producers of the TV documentary called Digital Native on air last month. Digital natives are younger generation who grown up with the existence of the internet. They use the net differently. They don't treat online and offline world differently. This guy is one of the center character of the program. Uh, he's an Indian American named Anshu Sama, age 15. And he developed an educational card game by just using the net to research the chemical elements, which is the theme of this card game, to find the designer, to find the investor, to even market the game. He totally relied on the net. He is one of the example of the digital natives, but traditionally companies, not only the media company, but all traditional companies have to face this new generation of users in a very f near future. If you're interested in, check your digital native uh, ability. Uh, this is a website that we uh, set up. You could check out your digital native degrees. So uh, these three trends are not only the trends that define the f future of the internet, but as a public broadcaster, one serves the society with various information so that the citizens could make the right decision. These trends might hurt the society to have a, a healthy decision process if we don't act correctly. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll also say we've also got here from NHK, uh, Yoshiro Fujita, who is Executive Research Engineer at NHK in Japan. Thank you. Top, top right. Yes. I predict there'll be a better version of Windows in 20 years' time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I predict there'll be a better version of Windows in 20 years' time, so that's... <laughs> for giving me uh, such an uh, uh, honorable uh, uh, di uh, interactive dialogue today, I am happy to be a uh, panelist. And uh, uh, allow me to uh, tell my uh, background uh, briefly. Uh, just I've involved heavily in the uh, uh, technology research of the broadcasting for uh, over uh, 20 years. So uh, the workshop title is uh, the what would be uh, internet would like in 20 years. So uh, uh, on the long term basis, uh, the 20 years uh, uh, technology will be a uh, 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 almighty card. And so uh, anything uh, in, f in, in uh, 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 Feasible, in, in feasible today uh, will be solved by the uh, technologies. And, and technologies, as you see, always uh, go faster than our expectation. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the internet uh, uh, in future uh, would, uh, doesn't look like what it is uh, in, in terms of internet contents. Uh, I'm not a uh, 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 communication network specialist, uh, but uh, from my uh, uh, experience, the survey shows uh, uh, the, uh, the video-based uh, web services is growing, uh, as you see in the blue dotted line, uh, no, no, yellow dotted line, and uh, uh, red dotted line is 
and blue dotted line is, is the text-based uh, uh, services. So now the internet is changing from text media to a video media. Uh, this is the survey from the uh, Japanese uh, <coughs> uh, industries uh, report. And uh, as you look at uh, the right-hand side, uh, there are many uh, terminals, so diverse terminals available, such as a mobile phone and set-top box and PC and game. So uh, people can enjoy uh, uh, video services uh, with the uh, so diverse terminals at the moment. From different perspectives, uh, I would draw a map of video services and I don't uh, explain uh, uh, in details about this map, uh, but uh, uh, horizontal axis shows uh, the broadcast versus broadband, and uh, vertical axis shows uh, functional uh, issues like non-real time and uh, real time. And as you see at the uh, uh, right hand side, there are, are many new services and uh, seems like the very fashionable uh, uh, services uh, created on the internet. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of discussions about the media merge, about the broadcasting and uh, broadband issues. Uh, talking about the broadcasting, uh, the uh, digital transitions are now underway and so uh, some more uh, digital uh, infrastructures are necessary uh, to the uh, completion of the transitions. On the other hand, uh, web technology, it's uh, already existed, and uh, uh, so new video services uh, may be adopted easily, easier. Uh, on the internet. That is one clear point. And in the future, internet will be uh, uh, media distributors. And uh, so uh, internet is becoming more and more video based. And so I listed the keywords, uh, the IPTV, which is focused on ITU and for the standardizations. And also the uh, uh, upstream of video content is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, and talking about the video home pages, pages uh, user generated content is uh, important factors uh, for, for, to for talking about the future issues. And, and also, uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, the talk, town advertisement, uh, the s simple uh, advertisement mode, uh, board is now replacing to a large screen uh, displays uh, to show a video. Uh, the video is a, uh, a very powerful expression tools. So. Um, uh, people are getting aware that this uh, uh, effective uh, media and tools. Uh, and the last one item, this, uh, talking about the super presence, this is the future issues, but the quality of video is uh, getting improving and uh, th uh, th a lot of uh, uh, laboratories are working on uh, 3D uh, televisions, uh, so there may be uh, breakthroughs. Uh, 3D is uh, very fashionable uh, uh, in Hollywood, I think. And uh, digital cinema, and also HD TV and beyond HD TV uh, will create and open up the new applications on the in internet in the future. Okay, uh, let me uh, uh, point out uh, uh, the uh, items uh, related to uh, the workshop agenda uh, number, s number two. Uh, that is about what technologies are necessary for uh, the future. 
Uh, I, I would like to focus on the human-friendly technologies uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, video technologies are uh, are getting uh, familiar uh, to uh, for uh, general people, but uh, the only handful of people can handle uh, or making uh, videos uh, and. Uh, uh, meeting with uh, the uh, internet philosophy, bottom-up philosophy, uh, the user-created, generated uh, uh, video is uh, very effective for the communications. So uh, the simple text may be changed to the videos on the blogs and also uh, debating and even in the uh, election campaign. Uh, uh, as you see uh, in the YouTube debates. Uh, but uh, these uh, things uh, related to the digital uh, world, uh, only a handful of uh, our YouTube generation can uh, uh, enjoy and uh, are comfortable to use it. Uh, so I would like to point out first uh, the, uh, the uh, making of video problems, and so technology will help uh, to create uh, video content automatically uh, for the general people. Uh, we developed, and we are developing these uh, TB marking markup language. So just you 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 are comfortable to making uh, programs using uh, uh, this technology. And also, uh, human-friendly uh, uh, technologies will allow us to uh, escaping from the uh, operating a very uh, complicated operations of of, of the uh, uh, of the receivers. And so, TV agents uh, may be uh, good uh, to help uh, for that complicated operation of the terminals. And so uh, look at that uh, uh, funny stuffed uh, animals. Uh, you can talk to uh, uh, this TV agent and uh, it responds to you of what, uh, what you want and, and, and uh, uh, have a di dialogue with, uh, with uh, the, the viewers and help uh, operation and help uh, to solve uh, questions and answers. And the last item, uh, context aware broadcasting system. <coughs> uh, this enables uh, single broadcast content to be presented in multiple forms to adapt the viewer's context. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, many uh, terminals available, but talking about the operation of these equipment and uh, these technologies will help. Uh, these technologies are based on the knowledge-based technologies and requiring a very uh, high-speed uh, computer chip and uh, uh, sophisticated uh, uh, software. So finally, uh, I would like uh, to uh, mention about a picture, future picture of video-centered service image on the internet. So an uh, important factor is, as I mentioned, the human-friendly uh, technologies. So generally, general people are comfortable to use uh, video tools or uh, any type of terminals, you can use it uh, without stress. So that uh, the technology will help that areas. So in conclusion, uh, the internet, uh, I will summarize my talk, internet 
will be another means providing contents. And video service uh, will be a key application. So innovative technology will enhance video media being for everyone. Um, not only uh, video media is not only for uh, providers uh, and uh, so video media should be for everyone is necessary and that is meeting the bottom up philosophy of the internet. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Yoshira, thank you very much indeed. I worry about the arrival of 3D and 4D television. I think I'm going to have to go to the gym as a television presenter and uh, try, to, <laughs> try to improve my look. Is that was it? Um, we've got some more speakers, but I wonder whether anyone on the floor had any comments they'd like to make before we go on to uh, the other speakers. Anyone out there? Anything you'd like to say so far on anything you've heard? If you do, just put up your hand and uh, we'll take any questions now before we go on to our next speakers and then we'll have some more debate afterwards. Uh, any, anything occur to you at all? Feel free to. Yes, gentlemen, uh, there. Just if you just stand up and say your name and uh, who you are. Yeah. Has he got a mic? Can we put the lights on? Oh, but let's put the lights on as well, actually. Can we just see, uh, let's see uh, where everyone is. So. You might have to shout a bit as well. I'm not sure we've got a microphone for you there. So, so. If we look at the sort of lifeblood of the last 20 years of the internet, it's been things like HTML. Um, now we are seeing not just new media, but new languages coming up to, to be able to express the, the, the new media. What, what concerns me, and perhaps maybe the ITU represented by have a comment on this as well, is the tendency for new markup languages to have patents attached to them and IPR restrictions on using them, which is fundamentally different to the way that we built the old internet with HTML. Uh, TBML, sure. oh, Okay. Uh, at the present time, uh, th this has not uh, in a standardization process. Uh, and uh, TBML, and we have also developed uh, TBML players, uh, this is similar to HTML, so hypertext uh, language uh, for the internet and web browsers. So the uh, the and also uh, uh, these technologies are now in the at the infant stage, but in the future, uh, I think the, the uh, uh, specialist uh, say about the broadcast uh, producers. Uh, are making our professional content, but uh, our technology will cover uh, the uh, TV programs for uh, general people. I mean, uh, the, so so that is uh, uh, I th I hope that will be uh, the uh, strong uh, tools for everyone to making videos. And do I get the impression you're worried about the open access of this? Is that is that yeah? So the concern the concern about you're worried is going to be copyrighted and difficult for people to to get a access to. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. In that. Mm. Mm. So I suppose the question is whether TVML is going to be open to all or whether it's going to be so copyright protected that uh, that, that it's not going to be easily adaptable by people. Or, mm. Well. I'm not a uh, specialist on uh, rights issues, but uh, TBML may be uh, open mm -hmm. contents for uh, the internet use. That mm -hmm. is the ideal usage of the mm -hmm. TBML. And also these uh, programs are on the website and uh, you can download free uh, from our website, techn of our research of all these I wanted to websites. Whether the EBU have done any, any thoughts on, on the open access aspects of all this? Yes, we, 
Uh, David Wood. European, sorry, European broadcasters are completely committed to open systems and uh, be assured that we'll do everything we can to make uh, uh, whatever API is used in this converged environment uh, uh, open and, and license free. So, uh, of course, there's a lot of work to be done to develop it yet, so we don't know exactly what it is, but you can be sure that's going to be our target, is a, an open system. Uh, some more questions. I think I saw a hand over there. Actually, if we can have the lights on, it's quite difficult to actually see uh, who's in the audience. Can we put the lights on? So, um, my, my name is Shadi Abuzara. I work for the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C. Um, I, I, one observation before I, I, I react to the, the, to the question earlier. Um, I, I'm just very interested to see that um, sometimes the web and internet are used as synonyms even at such a panel. And I think that the interesting aspect of it is um, I, I think that um, the infrastructure, the connectivity, and the contents go hand in hand, and that's a very important concept. Now, in, in relation to, to, to video, um, sometimes there's the notion that video might replace the hypertext, uh, but what I um, what was very interested to see in this presentation is maybe the merging of hypertext and video. And actually at W3C we have a video activity right now in which we're looking specifically at this issue um, in, in, in order um, to provide, um, as, as you know from W3C, royalty-free um, 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 technologies uh, that can be reused. Um, licensing is an issue very often with, the, with actually the codex, the formats, um, uh, but um, we hope to be able to produce such um, um, video technologies for the web uh, that are royalty-free and open uh, standards. Um, I, I just also want to mention in this context that the structuring of information is maybe much more the question than how the technology itself looks like. If you look at something like the DAISY standard, uh, you see how they structure information regardless if it's video or audio or something. So it's, it's this um, um, merging of hypertext or, or, or structured information with video or audio. Joshua, I wonder, I wonder how you see this, the fact that everything goes together, doesn't it? You can't separate out the content from the technology, in a way, and, and from the infrastructure. Absolutely. Um, I think, uh, you know, the basic thing is uh, internet, or the content on the internet is uh, the based, based on the technology. But I, the thing I want to insist is, it's, it's not just the video, it's, as, you, as the chairman um, uh, mentioned, content is the king, mm -hmm. but I would rather say content with communication is the king. So the younger generation is not just watching the video, they communicate through exchanging the video. So I think that will make a difference uh, from the younger generation or uh, in, a, in, in the future or, or 20, 20 years time. Mm. That's an interesting point actually. Uh, yes, any other questions before we move on to our next speaker? Oh, could the ITU comment oh, on that yes, standards yes, uh, thing? Yes, right. oh, Do you want to talk about the standards issue? Hmm. Well, I can say very briefly from the perspective of ITU, one of our main functions is to develop standards in the field of broadcasting and communications, and uh, of course we call them recommendations. But when recommendations or standards come out of the ITU, we have a very, a very clear intellectual property policy. And it's a policy that's similar to other standards bodies. So uh, usually when it a recommendation comes out from the ITU, it, it's, it's openly available to everybody. And so therefore, those who participate in our work and those who contribute their intellectual ideas have to abide by that policy and have to agree in advance to make this open and available to others. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, gentlemen here, yes. Uh, hi, I'm, my name is Ravi. Let me... Uh, congratulate you first of all for being so brave to even predict <laughs> what's going to happen in year 2029 because we are in the fag end of 2008 anyway <clears throat> that kind of a time frame at least in the in the internet frame of mind it's eons so the kind of research the kind of products that are likely to come to fore these digital natives are the ones they're going to be providing they're going to be playing an active part right so the traditional thinking with which we might want to project what 2029 is going to look like, right? So we have to take it with a pinch of salt anyway, no, not to cast any aspersions on anyone of the panel. So increasingly what I find is that, uh, I guess <clears throat> you being, some of them, uh, 
some of you being broadcasters and such. Uh, broadcast medium means that in, I'm tied to my television, I'm tied to my programs, I'm living in the surreal world, or perhaps it's very individualistic in nature, as opposed to uh, the, the, the community aspects, right? So do you guys see, in, even in year 2029, where everybody is walking with their personal entertainment options, perhaps we are a lot more closer to Star Trek with a helmet on, which is we are living in our own bubble and cocoon of sorts. I, is that likely to happen? Well, uh, I'll just say one thing very quickly before I say to everyone else. I mean, in Britain, for example, the BBC has been running a, an experiment which, which worked very well, which is uh, broadcasting our main television channels on mobile phones, uh, you know, our main 24-hour entertainment channels. Uh, and people could actually watch, you know, we did an experiment, I think it was in the Oxfordshire region of Britain, people could uh, watch as they journeyed to work uh, BBC One breakfast news on their mobile phone, and it proved to be very popular. Uh, so we're already experimenting with a large number of whatever technology is available now with the aim of making television more <coughs> portable. So you're not tied to your television set, it goes with, you know, maybe it's going to be your watch in future, we don't know. But we know technology is certainly going to emerge, which which will allow these these to be more portable. I mean, maybe perhaps Toshio and, and a then brief David. interruption, if I may. Yeah. Uh, could you also address if it is possible that uh, as a society we'll be losing physical touch, and we'll be much more living in our own cocoon? No, that's a question for the digital native man, I think, isn't it, Toshio? You've looked quite a lot at how the digital natives live mm. their lives. Yeah. Yeah, it might look. Uh, uh, you know, isolated in a real world, but they're connected or actually uh, heavily connected through the net. So they're watching TV, um, opening up their uh, instant messaging, and if they found something uh, interesting on the YouTube, they will uh, suddenly, you know, send the email to just to inform them. So in that case, you know, they don't uh, differentiate the online world and the offline world. So in that sense, they are connected and they're they, they have some sense of a uh, com uh, community there. Yoshira, about the technology, which is one of the big questions, it's hard to predict 20 years ahead, but presumably we are going to see a lot of new technology, aren't we? Yes. Uh, the, the, the talking about the virtual technologies and the real time, uh, real world, uh, there will be a uh, lot of available technologies uh, for the virtual uh, net societies and uh, one of the thing is uh, the h huge amount of data can be handled uh, by the innovation technology of the bandwidth and also the security issues uh, in 20 years of time uh, the uh, solutions may be uh, feasible the authentic Technologies. What, what, what do you see as those? I mean, do you see mobile phones? Obviously, they're going to become much more sophisticated, but you're talking about maybe watching TV on your watch, people have talked about. You know, we could develop watches, for, for which can also be communication tools. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I could uh, uh, additional information mm -hmm. for that. In Japan, there is a, a, a mobile TV set, a mobile phone TV set, which, call, which we call one set. That's uh, uh, we just using the one segment of the 13 segments for the digital terrestrial channel. So this handset we have in the market, we already have 30 million handsets. So that's a huge number. But uh, it, we, are try, we are simultaneously uh, uh, transmitting the same program for the traditional TV to the, and, and the handset. But uh, we're trying to uh, do uh, original programming starting this um, next spring. Obviously, new, a new media wants a new content, so uh, we are trying to figure out what kind of a content will suit this new media. What are your ideas at the moment on that? What are your thoughts that might suit the, I mean, for example, I know in Britain people have experimented with one-minute soap operas. And oh, yes, that. yes. So uh, normally the program is 30 minutes, but uh, um, the average u users is like, they watch the TV on the handset only for like five or 10 minutes. So we are th thinking about uh, uh, programming short contents uh, uh, for, a sp for this handset, right. for one sec channel. Mm. David, have the EBU uh, looked at this? Have? 
Uh, yes, sure. I, I, I guess a personal opinion, though, is it's, it's a real mistake to imagine that the world is, is, is homogeneous and that uh, every, everybody's going to want the same thing. That's absolutely mm -hmm. fatal. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when we started looking at um, mobile television in the EBU, we said, oh, look how successful the Walkman was. It creates a comfort zone around the, the person, you know. Uh, it's bound to be, isn't it, the digital television, the, the extension of the Walkman. Uh, is, 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 has a television screen on it, but actually, f by far, uh, not everybody used <laughs> used the Walkman. The Walkman, uh, and and these things are, are things that you know, some y young people use, and that's fine. It's not homogeneous because, if I may, you in Japan you get on a train in the morning and you spend two hours to get to Tokyo, so you got plenty of time to to watch an hour and a half. Sorry, you got plenty of time to watch the damn thing, but where I am, I've got to walk to work, and if I have a, uh, a television, I'm going to walk into a lamppost, you know. <laughs> so, um, it, 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 it's, a real, it's a real mistake to imagine that the, the, the world is uh, homogeneous. And finally, just a point about, don't forget, we must avoid in the future this kind of dystopia, mm -hmm. where there is out there a, c a collection of people who, who don't know how to use the gadgets, the buttons, and all that, and feel alienated and can't get a job, and so on. So we can't afford to create... Uh, this kind of tension in society. Mm -hmm. So uh, those would be just uh, two points that I, I think it's going to be far from a hom homogeneous future. And let's try and work on it so that it's not a tense one either. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, we'll take some more questions from you in a minute, but let, let's hear from some more of our speakers now. I'd like to ask uh, Art Levin, who also comes from the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union. He's uh, from the uh, Strategy and Policy Division too. To, uh, to make his speech. Oh. Okay, let me get started. Uh, I'm reminded of the, the, the uh, question from the audience right in front of me, what will the inter internet be like in 20 years? And I almost thought I should just say, I don't know, and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really the honest answer, but since I'm here, I'll, I'll take a few minutes and try and give some thoughts on the matter. I uh, entitled my presentation, Internet 2020, not to confuse you with numbers. Uh, one of the things that we're doing in ITU in, in the standards field and in telecommunications is a bit to try and predict the future and to predict that future so that we can anticipate what might be some of the standards needs. As you know, standards are the reason that you can use all these devices anywhere in the world, anytime, and from different manufacturers and service and content providers. Um, so our, we are working on a report called Internet 2020 to try and anticipate some of those needs and to try and uh, see what's going to be some of the emerging technologies. I have to say that we originally were going to call the report Internet 2050, uh, but we realized that was far too ambitious. No one can possibly know what the Internet will be like in, in 2050, although I have uh, some ideas about that as well. I think it will probably be something that is part of our own uh, physical selves by that time. So what have we come up with for Internet 2020, which is a little bit less ambitious than 20 years from now? Um, we've already heard some things uh, from other panelists and very interesting presentations about what are going to be some of the user needs. I like the term very much digital natives. Uh, if I ever form a rock group, I think if you haven't trademarked it, I think I would use that name for the group. Um, we see already, and I, I'll mention a few other trends that are going on in, in, in the Internet, uh, but what, what I want to come to at the end is to say, what's going to be underneath all of this? What is that thing out there that's going to make all these devices, applications, content, uh, laptops, portables, how is it all going to work? What is the basic architecture and can it support all this? And that is our main consideration at the ITU. So where do we stand right now? We have about one billion users of fixed internet and of course you know it's growing every day. India just became the fourth largest market for internet users in the world. Uh, there's about a hundred million broadband lines and the predictions are that will double uh, at least within five years. And more and more we're having even fiber optic to the homes. 
the next number is, is a staggering number. It's one of the great success stories, I think, in, in, in modern times in terms of, of uptake of technology, is the, is the rapid deployment of mobile telephony. We're almost up to 4 billion users. Uh, in, some, in some developed countries, many people now have two mobile phones. And increasingly, mobile telephony is not just about making phone calls. It's about using the internet, watching television, and some of the other uh, applications that you've heard. Uh, and this is a network such as 3G, 3.5G. These are networks that have much higher capacities and are able to provide these kinds of applications. So what we're seeing is that uh, not only are people using the internet more, but they're using it more in a mobile context. Uh, one thing we also, another whole area is things using the internet. Now, internet of things is an, an intriguing concept. Uh, what this means is that the internet can be used to, in all types of ways to, to monitor the, the activity of, of appliances, of physical elements. To give you one simple example, um, we're, one of the things we're looking at is climate change. And it, would, it will be possible in the near future, and it's possible already in experimental in some places. You can sit in your office and you can have a very, uh, a, a, an internet system that uh, is linked to all the appliances in your home, and that way you can use your appliances in the most energy efficient manner. Turn on your washing machine and, and do a, a whole number of applications. Another thing is internet of services. There's also increasing in tenancy, and for those of you who are engineers, you've heard the, the expression cloud computing. Uh, a tendency to have more and more even office <coughs> services based on the internet, not based on your PC, not based in your physical uh, company. Of course, the uh, internet really was not originally designed to do all these things, and that's a problem. I'm using internet in, as in the big eye sense of it as the network of networks. Uh, I won't go through the history of the internet. We have some of the founders of it here. Uh, but as you know, it started out as, as a defense application in the United States. It also then became a, a major tool for a, in universities and academia. Um, and given concern about the explosive growth of the Internet and some of the risks of using the Internet, there is now efforts to create parallel Internets, particularly in academia. Also, uh, what's important about academic networks, and this is, you find this, of course, in, in other, other aspects of life, the intensive amount of use of the Internet, the intensive amount of data that's transmitted through the Internet. For example, I gave the example of the LHC, which is the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, where I'm based, which uh, accumulates and transmits enormous amounts of data about, about in particle physics. And that's just one example. The Internet uh, is somewhat of an elderly design. It, we've had it now for almost 20 years. Um, Again, it was not really built to support many of these services in the same way that the, the basic telephone system was not built to, s to support transmission of data. Uh, we are increasingly adding many more users. We're adding many more devices. Um, as you know, we're running out of domain name addresses and the efforts to move to a, a new technology, IPv6, has, has been slower than expected. Uh, we use it for in instant messaging services. So basically, the Internet has become our phone system. Next Generation Networks was, was mentioned by, uh, by Malcolm Johnson earlier. These are new technologies that will facilitate the use of uh, broadband, portable, fixed uh, communication services in one network. And these are slowly being rolled out, in, particularly in developed countries. So we keep adding more and more things to the Internet, more and more applications, more services. Uh, there's no limit to creativity and innovation. But how much longer can the basic architecture of the Internet support all of these? these increments is really the question. So the big question really in, in, that we're looking at in ITU, and of course when I say ITU I mean our membership as well. ITU is a UN agency, but unlike some of our, our brother and sister institutions, we're, we're quite unique in that we're a partnership. We have 191 governments that are part of the ITU, but in addition we have 600 companies. And in the standards field, most of the work is done by the private sector, by the companies, including NHK and, and um, operators and manufacturers from throughout the world. So the real question that uh, we've been grappling with in the ITU and that we are addressing in this report, and, and I have at the bottom of this slide a, a very excellent presentation by, uh, from the Japanese government on some of these issues, is do we have to come up with a new internet or can we build around the existing internet? What we call the new in internet would be clean slate design. Now, I don't have an answer to that question today for you. Maybe somebody in the audience does. But what we're looking at is uh, if you wanted to devise an, an ideal internet, at least based on what we know now as how we're using the internet and what we can anticipate with some of the future applications, 
Uh, these are some of the elements that you would have to look at. And in, we will be publishing our report shortly, and it will be available on our website. Since we are energy efficient, we don't make paper copies anymore, uh, unless a <coughs> extreme need. But, and so I, I, I advise you to look for this report when it, when it comes out shortly, where I explain, and we explain all these terms. But let me mention a few of them. Obviously, security is key. We need to have... Oh, we need to have a secure internet, and there have been many workshops and panel discussions on that issue during the last few days. Scalability, um, not only do we need an internet for 2020, but we need, or 2029, but we need an internet that will also be uh, useful and capable of, in 2049. Mobility, as I mentioned, increasingly, and particularly in the developing world, we're seeing that the access to the internet is going to be through mobile applications. Um, so that is going to be a key criteria for any new system. Reconfigurability, we need an internet that can be adapted to new applications and the ones that we haven't even dreamed of or thought of yet. Um, accessibility, this, this issue has many different aspects to it. Um, we've had a number of workshops and panels and IT is also part of a dynamic coalition on accessibility so that everybody has the ability to use the internet despite any physical handicaps. Another aspect of accessibility and one that often gets lost sight of is cost. It's, it's very, uh, I'm, I'm always intrigued when people talk about the, uh, all the applications and sending Facebook and YouTube and doing all this through your I iPhone. But as a parent of a teenager, every month you get the bill for all those services. <laughs> and that's uh, when you get to another aspect of accessibility, the cost of it. And as you know, these are rather expensive, they can be rather expensive services uh, at present. Uh, usability, of course, uh, some people find all of these gadgets uh, very easy to use, other people feel a bit constrained, and there are certainly efforts to make, the, make it all work a little bit more intuitively and a bit more easily. And finally, energy efficiency. This is a very important issue. Um, again, it's, we can talk about the importance of getting broadband uh, deployed throughout the world, but we also have to be concerned about the energy implications of that. Uh, a recent study that came out in Australia last week from the University of Melbourne uh, estimates that broadband there will double in the next few years, and that will create an energy bottleneck. Uh, this will double the amount of energy used uh, for, the, for access to the Internet, and it's going to create a real problem there. So this is also an issue that we must take into consideration. Not only do we have to uh, expand and improve the Internet, but we have to make it much more energy efficient. Not only the network itself, but also the, the devices we use to access it. Again, you have a, a URL there, which uh, those who have a more technical bent I, 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 I uh, recommend that you take a look at it for a very excellent presentation. So where does that leave us? Again, I don't have any answers to the question, but it will be a fundamental challenge as to whether we can go on with the existing architecture or have to think of something that is new and different. Um, there is a lot of work being done in this area already. Um, there are projects in Europe, in North America, the FIN project, uh, in Japan, Korea, China, and other countries in Asia that are looking very actively at all these questions. And we are hoping that we will see uh, some answers in the near future. And, and of course, in the ITU, those answers become recommendations and standards for the next generation of the Internet. Of course, this can all be uh, positive economically for to help promote jobs and economic growth. Um, and I certainly, that's a very relevant message here in Hyderabad, India. Uh, that concluded the, my slides, but I did want to say a few additional words uh, uh, on some topics that I don't think we're addressing that were in the program. And those topics are uh, regulation and ownership. And this is something that we've seen very much in IT, and now I'll speak a bit more from a policy perspective. As you know, the, uh, we have broadcasters on the panel. Save it. Um, we have a number of different uh, services that are converged, and that's, the, that's the, the buzzword for the Internet. We converge these services, and get, you can get them all through the Internet. The Internet can be anything. It's a, phone, it's a phone system, it's a TV, it's a radio, you can watch movies. But these are all uh, services that are coming from different disciplines, different areas. In the past, the broadcaster was regulated one way, the, tele the telephone company was regulated a different way. And we've seen uh, in the last, only in the last 15 years has there been independent regulation or independent regulators of telecommunications. This has been a dramatic uh, change and development in telecommunications. And, the, and now we have close to 130 independent regulators. In addition, we've seen another trend, and that is converge regulators. Increasingly, one regulator now, instead of having four or five different entities in, in, a, in a government, we have one entity that's responsible for all these elements, from broadcasting to wireless transmissions to, to, to the, the phone company. 
So this is a trend that will ha will, I'm sure will continue um, as we go forward with the Internet and as it creates new challenges for regulation. As, those have, as some have mentioned already, of course, uh, technology usually seems to be ahead of the regulators, and that's one of the great problems. And uh, in that light, I'll, cl I'll close with just a, a, a slight anecdote. Um, I also teach international telecommunications law, and I, I well remember in 1997 when I first gave my course, I was asked, well, could you say a few things about the Internet? And I found that it, it only took me one hour to discuss all of Internet law and regulation. And that's 1997, 11 years ago. In the year 2002, I gave the same course at a different university. And I saw in their curriculum, and this is only five years later, there was an entire course, 28 hours, on internet taxation law. That was only in five years. So again, when the issue of regulation and content creates enormous challenges for regulators, for policymakers, enormous opportunities for lawyers. So I think another aspect of the future of the internet is, is that it's going to be, uh, it, there are a lot of very difficult legal and policy issues that need to be t sorted out. That is something we also are looking at at the IT as well. So I hope that, I don't really know that I've answered the question. I think it's almost an unanswerable question, but I think um, like the other speakers, we've all given some, some food for thought on these issues. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much indeed. That was a very interesting presentation. I'm sure we're all delighted to hear there'll be more opportunities for lawyers in the future. Let's see. Um, Bob Kahn has joined us, and I'd like to invite him to come up here to the panel and say a few words to us about how he sees all this unfolding. Bob is uh, President and Chief Executive of uh, the Corporation for National Research Initiatives. Uh, feel free to go there, Bob. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, sorry I couldn't be with you for this whole session. I'm in other meetings right now, so I extracted myself from that, and I'm going to have to go back after I make my remarks, but I agreed to come up on the podium and say a few, say a few things and uh, take any questions that you might have uh, uh, before I leave.